All right, great, great, great. Glad to be back with you. I came home today and I had a new vinyl on the doorstep that I've been waiting for. This is actually, um, let's call this a semi grail, only because I've only been recollecting records uh, for about a year and a half now. Not even, yeah, well, May of last year, about a year and a half. Um, and this has been up there on the list. Um, these are not like, they're old records, old releases that had been put on vinyl in 2011. So by the time I got into collecting vinyl again, they were pretty getting pretty hard to find. Um, I was able to quickly score the first and third album by this band, but the second one has eluded me for a while until it popped up last week on uh, Discogs. And the price was maybe, hmm, I would have liked to have seen it maybe $5 cheaper, 10 maybe, but I was going to not take the chance of not getting to see it again. And this one is like near mint condition. So I grabbed it and it came in today. And the band I'm talking about is Tourniquet Psycho Surgery. This was originally released, uh, I want to say 19. Yeah, I'm not even going to try to read that small stuff. Back in the 90s, early 90s. One of my favorite. Now this is a um, this is a Christian band, and um, their styles change periodically, but they've always had kind of a thrash effect, um, where you know real tight guitars and. And uh, the drummer, Ted Kirkpatrick, is an amazing drummer. Um, so this was their second album, and I got it on blue vinyl. I can't recall. I think it was on blue and then black, and so I got the blue one. So this completes the three vinyl set, which includes their first album, Stop the Bleeding, which I have on red vinyl. You can't really see it there. This one was also available on like a blood splatter vinyl. That is really expensive if you ever run across one of those. Satisfy with the red. And then the Pathogenic Ocular Dissonance. They're one of those really kind of a technical thrashy type band. Lots of time changes, lots of oddities. Um, anyway, the first, and this is on double vinyl. And this is kind of a weird uh, brownish look. Anyway, this one I was able to grab from the band when I first got back into vinyl. So this one had been... Maybe this one was released later, I don't know. But this one was easier to find. Stop the Bleeding I found from a guy online. Uh, probably paid a little more than I wanted for that. And now I finally got these, the third one. So, now the thing about the band, I'll give you a quick rundown on the band. Um, the first three albums, which I have on CD2, these have been remastered. So we got Stop the Bleeding, Pathogenic Psychosurgery, and Pathogenic Ocular Dissonance. The thing with the titles is the uh, the drummer worked in a medical field and like medical equipment or something. So he always had these weird medical terms, really uh, deep stuff. He has songs on like Phantom Limb and stuff like that. Really cool, you know, interesting lyrics. The band went through uh, three s albums with their original singer Guy Ritter. On this first album, um, everybody compared it. Uh, and this one I think was in 1990. See that? 2001. Anyway, 1990, but reissued in 2001. He very much sounds like, now I didn't know it at the time because I never listened to this, but uh, vocal stylings very similar to King Diamond. He goes with the real high falsetto. Um, when I bought this back in the, in the day, I had no, I didn't never listen to King Diamond, was never really a Merciful Fate fan. So I didn't know what the comparison was until years later when I checked it out. I said, oh wow, he does kind of sound like King Diamond. Well, it came with mixed reviews. A lot of people didn't like that style. They didn't like that vocals. So when it came to the second album, he kind of killed the falsetto and went with a more mid-tone voice. I kind of missed the falsetto, but on these two, he kind of went with that kind of a style. Um, the guitar player, Gary Lanier, um, would provide like the second vocals, kind of the, the, the barking, growl type stuff. So those three albums, then he was no longer in the band. Uh, the next little release was just a little live thing. The label, the, the label Intense Records had a lot of their bands go in and just do live in the studio. And what they did with this is they got the singer from Bloodgood, Les Carlson, to come in on guest vocals. And so he sang all these songs. And the bands that did these, that's what was it, like four or five of them. There was one by them and one by Rose and one by Mortal. Deliverance. And they would just go in the studio and record live. There's a little chatting in here and stuff. And they always did a, 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 a everybody did a cover. And like I think Deliverance did, was a, they did Striper song. Um, anyway, they do a song, The Tempter by Trouble. Um, and then they do a Bloodgood song because the singer for Bloodgood was here. So that was just an interim while they were looking for a band, for a singer. 
Okay, so then they got a new singer, uh, Luke Easter, and they put out Vanishing Lessons. His vocal styles were uh, a bit different, little just straightforward kind of yelling, um, almost hardcore sounding, um, but musically they still had the real technical finesse. Um, this was a really good album they came out with, and they did like a little acoustic type album, five songs. Um, they do a cover tune of a, a Fleetwood Mac song in here. Um, oh well, a lot of people have done it. I'm not sure. I know Fleetwood Mac did, I think. Anyway, it's a cover. Kind of more of acoustic flair, stripped down, interesting concept here. Um, they have a best of album that had a couple new songs, um, and there was like best of. And then. They went for a string with Luke Easter. They did Crawl to China, which most people kind of poo-pooed. It's one of my favorite albums. I have two versions of it, the original and the remaster. I don't know how I ended up with I had two of all of them, but I sold most of them. Somehow, I guess, because people probably didn't like it, they didn't, uh, I never sold this one. Um, so, Crawl to China, which I thought was a really good album. And then a, a full-out acoustic album total acoustic guitars and singing so that was kind of an interesting I think this was just released by the band and then they came back with microscopic view of a telescopic realm and um, again you got the weird medical stuff on here um, at this point the band was breaking into uh, they kept kind of rotating members but for the most part the guitar player the drummer the drummer can play guitar bass and everything so um, and then Luke is a singer, so they were kind of a three-piece. They had guest people playing. Marty Friedman played on some of these albums. Different guest guitars would come in. Um, where Malt and Rust Destroy, autographed by the three of them. Again, I think this one had more guest people. Marty Friedman was on one of these or so. Um, Antiseptic Bloodbath, again, down to the three guys with, with guest people. Um, then Luke Easter left the scene. I think it had to do with the fact that a lot of the guys had moved. So the, the album that came out after that, and I'm going to say a 2014, is Onward to Freedom. And this one had a bunch of guest vocalists, guitar players. Um, the first song on here, Onward to Freedom, Freedom uh, had Michael Sweet of Striper singing on it. They had other people on here. Uh, Maddie Montgomery, uh, Chris Poland played guitars. He's from ancient Megadeth days. Um, Rex Carroll played guitar, Bruce Franklin and Doug Pinnock. Bruce Franklin uh, was from uh, Trouble. Doug Pinnock sings, he's from King's X. Um, Marty Friedman, they do have a song on here with Luke Easter. Um, some of these names I don't recognize as much. Tony Palacios plays guitar in some songs. He's from Guardian. Um, and there was one that I'm forgetting. Anyway, oh, Kevin Young from uh, Disciple, another Christian band. So this was our latest. Now their newest album is coming out, I think it's supposed to drop in November. It's called uh, Medusa, Medusa, Medusa. Um, totally drawing a blank as I sit here. Anyway, uh, I did the Kickstarter for that. It's been in the making for a couple years now and it's finally done. And it, uh, I ordered the vinyl on that, so I will have another vinyl. I'm not sure if they'll ever go back and release the Luke Easter stuff on vinyl. For, the, for some reason, they put out these three in 2011, and then there's been no other vinyl releases since then. Back in uh, 89, 90, 91, I used to put out a uh, Christian underground Christian music magazine. So I made the comment the other day, I think everybody used to put out a magazine back in the 80s. I really did. And um, first issue, very generic dot matrix printer the logo was on a dot matrix printer that I then went back with a uh, marker and colored in looks kind of goofy anyway there's a magazine called the pen dragon on the front here we have the boys from Tempest uh, Jamie Rowe uh, went on to be the singer for Guardian I had a little to do with that as far as introducing him that's a different story all right issue number two has Guardian on the cover had an actual official logo at this point. The logo was drawn by me, uh, not, I mean drawn, designed by me, um, by the singer for the band Holy Right, Keith Miles. He went on later to sing for Titanic, and uh, yeah, Titanic. He had, oh, Final Acts he had done between uh, Holy Right, and then Final Acts released a couple things in the in the 80s and disappeared, and then into the 90s we came up with Titanic, and he was a singer under the name Simon. But um. He did the logo for me, 
and that was great. So it was an upgrade. It was still dot matrix. You can kind of tell there. Um, still kind of dot matrix in here. And it was a combination of inter uh, reviews, interviews, news, and some religious articles. Um, anyway, in one of these issues, and I don't, I don't want to even, I should have looked them up before I got here. In one of the issues was a time when the first Tourniquet album had come out. And I reviewed it, and I just ran it and raved about how great the drummer was. Because I'm a drummer, I appreciate drums, I listen to drums, I focus on drums when I hear things. And Ted Kirkpatrick, on, at the, on the scene at the time, was just, he blew me away. Great, you know, just a great drummer. Um, just all kinds of odd time stuff. Um, and then one day, lo and behold, my phone rings. Now remember, this is the days before the internet. This is the late 80s. Uh, and here is a phone call I get. I'm not even sure he tracked me down. Hey, this is Ted Kirkpatrick from Tourniquet. I really appreciate your review and your kind words, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, I got a call out of it. Really blew me away. Now, this is back in the days when I was still 19, 20, maybe 20. So, you know, you still had that rock. And, and, and you know, this was the days before the Internet. This was the days before you could become friends with these people and really talk to them. And these guys are way out in California. And all of a sudden, this guy's calling me that I'm like, oh, rock star anyway i got other st stories about that from back in the magazine days but that was one of the first ones that really blew me away was when the turner turner kit drum caught it anyway going on this was uh, this was issue three band called paradigm not many people know band called white ray they uh i was real good friends with with uh, the singer of this band used to talk to them all the time um they later changed their name to killed by kane which has been released on vinyl uh, last year and the white race stuff is actually supposedly in the works to come out and then the last issue that I did uh, a lot less music a lot more Jesus I was getting a little more serious there about that and talking about how music can't be uh, our God again it was still dot matrix printer so you know I never got much better than that um, oh there it is okay and so here's tourniquet this would have been the album with the first issue there it is tourniquet top to bleeding um, the vocalist Guy Ritter has a unique sound, sound. Half of the time he sings in a somewhat gritty, lower, very powerful voice. Other times he sings in a higher, piercing, very controlled voice. The latter seems to be dislike of some, yet I find it to be unique and enjoyable. I was talking about the vocals back in the day. The guitar shred, the production is astounding. The drums pound with mind-blowing excellence and originality. This is, in my opinion, some of the best drumming out on record today so anyway it earned me a quick call from Ted so I've been a fan ever since first album blew me away I've been a fan ever since um, looking forward to the new album and um, yeah I think that's it I had some other things that came in recently but I'm gonna wait and save it because this was gonna be my this is my tourniquet video. so I'm glad to have it have all three of these original tourniquets exciting I'm gonna go ahead and give you a little spin of uh, give you some clips of what these guys sound like in case you haven't heard of them and uh, see what you think. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Enjoy.
Yeah.